What is up guys, Taiki here, and today I'm very honored to welcome the Rug Doctor to my channel to discuss the work that they do for the community so DGENs like you and I can ape into these forums of confidence. So welcome Rug Doctor and how are you doing today? Hi there, I'm doing really well. It's really nice to, you know, be here and to <laughs> finally meet you. Uh, I know you've been shouting me out. Uh, I've been <laughs> reminded by a few people who've come to my channel and been like, hey, you should say hi to this guy. So here I am. <laughs> yeah, thanks for, thanks for being on. So just a quick introduction to anyone that may or may not know you, like who is the Rug Doctor? What do you do? And how did it all get started? Sure. So I am, well, I guess normal DGEN, just like everybody else here who wandered into DeFi a few months ago. And after I just found DeFi, I got really into it. I've been holding crypto for a long time. So figuring out a way to be able to stake my crypto and earn interest instead of just holding was a revelation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it really gave me like a nice use case. And once I started doing that, I have a background in engineering. So I've done a lot of coding in the past. I figured out how to read these solidity contracts after getting rugged one too many times, like everybody else who just joins DeFi does. Uh -huh. You join, you get wrecked, you feel real sad about your life for a little bit. And I decided to do something about it. And for that was screening, I started screening things. And then I <laughs> created a Telegram channel to screen for everybody else. If I was already doing it for me, may as well do it for you. So that's what we do. We are a community that's focused on uh, DeFi safety, uh, and we basically just provide free educational resources and a safety sheets so you guys don't get wrecked because we have all get wrecked and there's no reason for anybody else to get wrecked in the future. Yeah, unfortunately, because of the rug doctor, I have not gotten wrecked yet, right? Yeah, I, I know I'll get wrecked at some point, but for now, I've been going into these safer forms. So I, I see that you have your website up. So can you just really go yeah. over uh, your website, how to use it? And if you're, if, if like a new person, getting into farming, like how would you recommend uh, they navigate this website? Sure, so this is my website, rugdoc.io, and you can see that our main feature is our farm safety reviews. Um, we will have like a farm up top, but that's uh, just a paid advertisement. Uh, but basically what you're looking for is all farms that have come out in the last 24 hours will be labeled with a new sticker. And you can essentially go into these farms and you can get a very quick risk assessment from low risk to some risk to a high risk project. You can look at different types of chains and filter these projects by chains for BSC or Polygon or HACO or Avalanche. We let you look at the website and get a direct link. And then we also give our reviews. So you can basically see for cookie swap just came out, it's in BSC. It's a low-risk project, and it's low-risk because it's just a panther fork. And then we tell you some details. It has a 5% transfer tax. It has anti-whale, which limits transfers to 2.5% of the supply. And we just give you the lowdown on like what the code actually lets this thing do. Um, we give you any warnings, if there are any warnings about this. So if we look at, say, DinoSwap, which is a rug this morning, we basically tell you this is high risk and it's high risk because when we review this contract, it has a migrator and a migrator can steal all your tokens at any time. So that's exactly what our main feature on this website does. Um, then we have our calendar, which is a new feature and our farming calendar basically lets you find new farms that are launching on particular days. Um, as you can see, we just kind of add them as we go. Most farms are pretty new. If you look at today, we see that there's Scorpion Swap, there's Andromeda, and there's Ant DeFi that are coming out today. We give you the block start time and the rough actual start time in UTC. And then we explain how we do our risk rating. But one of our biggest fun new features is our wiki. And so on our wiki, we basically show new people or even experienced people in DeFi like what they're trying to do. If you need to know how to emergency withdraw in BSC, we have a whole article that gives you a table of contents and steps and how to find the PID and how to connect your wallet. We also have related articles, uh, you know, how to emergency withdraw in Polygon, how to find a pool ID. And it's just a general nice free resource so you can farm safely and you know what you're doing. And we're rolling out new articles every day. So it's really exciting. Yeah, this is great. 
And I, I feel like, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm also in your Telegram group with over 8,000 members. And sometimes I get these updates like, yo, like this farm, the, the developer did this thing. So try to get out as soon as possible. And, you know, it's good to like know these, like, I, I, like know how to withdraw and stuff beforehand because if you're just if you're just getting the update and you're trying to like learn on the spot like okay how do I withdraw emergency withdraw then it can get really hectic so really like amazing resource um, I personally use it almost every day and I recommend any new farmers to do this as well uh, and just to briefly go over I guess my story right uh, yeah I guess my YouTube like has grown exponentially in the, like the last two months and I guess I started I got started uh, with farming uh, like seven weeks ago right? And on Polygon. And like initially, like I was getting into these safe farms because I like didn't know how to read code. And then someone in my community uh, shared the Rogue Doctor Google Sheets, right? And but back then it was like Google Sheets. And I'm like, all right, <laughs> I don't know who, I don't know who this person is. And, but I'm going to put my money behind this person's words. And I just like aped into these farms. And uh, I guess through that success, <laughs> my channel grew. So without the Rogue Doctor, I would not be where I am today. Uh, so I really want to thank you for your work. So that being said, um, I don't know, like, I don't know how to read code. I'm not a technical person by any means. So can you go more in depth on like what you actually like look at, right? To determine whether a farm is low risk, et cetera. Uh, and yeah, I know you have a course. Google, I know you have a, a slide uh, deck that you can like share and stuff. You can yeah. go over that. that. We do. All right. So uh, here we are. And I have my team make a beautiful slideshow for us, which is always lovely. We are RugDoc and it gives a little bit of an overview. Like we are really community oriented. We came out of a Telegram channel, out of, you know, just a weird hobby that I had. It is entirely crowdsourced. The whole entire operation depends on just everyday users who come into the channel and request uh, scans and they update us on projects and they are basically like the eyes and ears of DeFi and they bring it all into our little centralized community so we can review things and discuss things and spread news when we need to spread news. Like if there's a rug or if a project has changed its master chef and information needs to be edited. That said, obviously you've seen we provide independent farm reviews. We are not an audit. We are not affiliated with any farms. We do not have any farms of our own. Like I own no farms. I am not a farm person. Um, it literally is just a crowdfunded third party way to look at the code and we provide objective reviews of what is exactly in the code. We are not usually talking about how we feel about the project or what the tokenomics are. Although if it seems like there will be a big impact, we'll put a note on it. They just try to be really code-centered, objective third-party reviews on all of the farms that are community requests. And like you've seen, it's all free. We provide everything free of charge to you because I think that DeFi needs to be a safer place. I want DeFi to be a safer place for my own farming needs and desires. I want farms to be more compliant with safety because I want DeFi to last for a while. I don't want DeFi to just disappear. And I think that if we're not careful and if this whole place turns into a giant scam zone, DeFi is just going to fold from psychological pressure of the community. <laughs> so we're yeah. trying to prevent that from happening. So we want everything to be free, accessible, independent and community driven. Like you saw our website already, you can find us on rugdoc.io or if you want a help or a resource on how to do things like emergency withdraw or you know, whatever you might need, how to check a diff yourself, how to actually scan codes yourself or like resources that we recommend for learning solidity, you can go to our wiki, which is wiki.rugdoc.io. Obviously we have our Telegram channel, which is rugdochat. We have, I think 8,100 or 8,200 members as of this morning, which yeah, is crazy. nuts because this thing just showed up two and a half months ago. It was just me and like 24 people. I remember it. I <laughs> just like started this thing, 20, 24 people in a room and we were just being ridiculous. And of course we have our Twitter, which is at Rug Steamer. So we believe that knowledge is power. Like I said, I want DeFi to be safer. I want this space to be enjoyable and I want this space to last. And the way that I think this happens is maybe due to my academic background, because I am a real doctor in real life, Ooh. is knowledge is power. 
I know. Yeah, fun fact. <laughs> Got the PhD. Um, knowledge is power. If you understand what you're doing and you understand how to read the information that these codes provide and interpret them, you will be a better farmer. You will not get as wrecked. You will be able to make more nuanced decisions and you'll be able to manage your finances better. So one of the things that we focus on is hard rugs. Hard rugs are the rugs that are going to be in the code and they're going to be uh, malicious code that's inserted that can steal all of your funds. It'll just liquidate whatever is inserted into the contract. So when you interact with the contract, you basically give it permission to use your funds. It takes your funds into the contract. And if it's a hard rug contract, there's a way for the developer or the team behind that farm to just steal all your money. And that's horrible. And it's completely unfair. It doesn't even give you a fighting chance. It just eats your money and that's that. So that's what we're focused on. A lot of people come into our chat day in, day out, and they want our opinion on soft drugs or they want us to update our comments to include soft drug features, but we don't, that's not what we're about because soft drugs are human elements. It's say when you have a deposit fee farm and you have that 4% that's been inserted, the developer says they're going to spend it on buybacks and burns and instead they just take the money and run, right? So your deposit burn fee is just, it's not applied to a burn fee or the dev or the team has a big bag of tokens and they just suddenly cash out and all of a sudden the price of the token crashes. Mm -hmm. They're unfortunate events. Obviously we don't condone this. I hate when it happens to me and it happens to me. It happens to my entire team. Yeah, it happens to me too. <laughs> it's unpredictable. Like there's no way to search for these things in the code. So that's not something we can really focus on. Uh, it would just be an exercise in futility. Um, so yeah, so we basically also want to tell you what to look out for. So codes that can hard rug you, we want to show you what a migrator code is and how they can steal your funds or what a proxy is and how it can steal your funds. We want you to know different chains and different advantages to the chains. Um, we want you to do risk management. Risk management is huge in our community. We always enforce split your bags. Don't be a complete ape. DeFi is never totally safe. This is the wild west out here. Even though we're trying to make the wild west a little bit safer, it's still a risky endeavor. Um, so yeah, uh, <laughs> we also love to show how we do our reviews. It's all over our wiki. It's all over our Trello. It's going to be all over our educational YouTube channel when we get that going. And we will be getting that going. We teach you how to read Solidity. We always share our diff checks and the exact lines of problematic code when we find them. So you know what to look for. We keep a rug library so you can reference it. Um, and yeah, we just try and teach you if you want to know how our review happens. And our review happens by we identify the master chef of these farms. We basically copy the code and then we put it into a program, something easy and free like diff checker works great that you can basically just like paste the code into uh, something that finds differences. And we compare them against parent forks. Parent forks are big, audited, long lasting projects that pretty much this entire ecosystem has been forked off of. So basically mm -hmm. copied off of. All of these farm codes are pretty much Uniswap or pancake swap or some variation of. And you can get smaller parents like Goose and like Full Sail. And now we see Panther is everywhere but everything is more or less the same base. So if we can compare the new farm that we're interested in with the old parent fork, we can see what differences in the code are there. And since these things like Pancake and Goose and Panther are audited and time tested at this point, you can basically treat the same amounts of code that you can match to it as audited and time tested. It also means when you find deviations, you need to know what they do. And that's what we do. We try and look for the differences and explain the differences. If the difference is just there's a 3% cap on the deposit fee versus a 100% deposit fee possible, that's not a big deal. 
and then we'll just list the only difference that we see is there's a cap on the deposit fee. That's pretty much our process. Of course, what we're trying to do is find these hard rugs and some of them have been pretty tragic. Um, I know recently we had some problems with polyweed and um, poly butterfly, which recently popped up. So basically what happened in that one is, uh, hang on one second, can we edit this up? Can you, is my screen still just the slideshow? Yeah, it's a slideshow. Okay, great, awesome, perfect. Okay, so basically what we see is poly butterfly happened a few weeks ago and one, someone in our community reached out and gave us this code. So we're just reviewing all of our codes like we do on any other day. And we found that in their master chef, there had a code that could steal stake tokens. We pointed this out and we blasted it. Once they were informed that we basically found their rug code, they go and create a message to the community that says they're creating a wrapper contract, which will have this rug functionality disabled and transfer ownership to the contract, which would have solved this problem. So we were like, great, awesome, cool, because we have actually come across farms that accidentally have rug code. They just copied a contract that say has a migrator in it because that was common in Pancake. And then we point it out and they fix it. And it's awesome, everybody wins. Like they get a safe contract, the community can't get rugged. So that's what we thought they were doing there. That is not what they did. They deployed their wrapper contract, but inside their wrapper, they hit another type of a rug code. They threw a proxy in there, which basically lets you upload a whole brand new contract into your contract and it lets you steal stuff if you need to. Um, so it basically let them just reclaim ownership and yet again, steal the stake tokens. So we go and we ask them about the proxy. They ask like, it didn't exist. And we were just like, well, it certainly does exist. We were looking at your code. You're sneaky, but you're not that <laughs> sneaky. Um, so we admitted that maybe there's a possibility that the team thought there was a need to reclaim their tokens down the line or reclaim their ownership down the line, and decide to include this functionality. But if this was our money, we were not going to go into it. And so we still recommended please unstake from Poly Butterfly as soon as possible. And if it was an honest mistake, we will reassess when appropriate uh, actions have been made. So that's what we told them. We were just like, look guys, maybe this isn't a rug code. It has not rugged yet. Plenty of projects have these potentially malicious codes in them and never do anything bad and actually need them for their functionality. But we're not gonna go into this because you're just a random new team. So maybe think about this for a second, guys. This is still high risk. And if this gets fixed, we'll fix it. Uh, well, they rugged. <laughs> so yeah. unsurprisingly, with a little bit of pressure, they rugged. And they stole $1.5 million, even though wow. we had blasted up. I know. That's crazy. That's a lot. It's, it's a lot of money because we've been shouting this around the community. We're like, guys, this is real high risk. They seem really shady. Literally four yeah. hours later, they rugged. Yeah, There's and these time... these apes, they don't learn. We, we just keep aping. I know. <laughs> the apes don't learn. We literally had like shouted this to our community. There was four hours between we first identified the problem and the rug, and yet still $1.5 million was in that contract. Yeah. Um, so that was great. We also, for a while, we kind of hinted at the functionality in a clever way, trying to get them to extend the time uh, so we basically tried to play along with them for a little while and just like try and bargain with them like, oh, guys, please put in a time lock. Oh, you know, like, pro like put the proxy behind a time lock just to try and buy our community some time between the rug to get everybody out if you're in a different time zone. Um, yeah, but that was that. Yeah. They were also and interesting because then they impersonated us afterwards. Oh, yeah. I, I saw one farm called like the rug doctor farm. And you were like, no, this is not us. This is not us. Like They're trying to scam you. And one thing I like yes. to chime on, to chime in, is that it's it's really cool that you kind of work with the community, right? Because the community like finds these farms and they ask you to recommend them. And as the rug doctor, the website and the team becomes more legitimate and more professional, um, these farm developers also have to kind of work with you, right? Because if yep. these developers have malicious code or like they, I guess if they're not careful, they might get like a medium risk rating, right? So they're forced to kind of 
go back to their code, fix it, like whatever problem they have. Because if everyone looks at the rug doctor, uh, the website, right, for these farms, then the developers kind of have to, I mean, it's, it, it get, first of all, it gets harder to rug, right? That, that's a good thing. And these developers kind of have to like clean their code uh, before releasing it to the public just so they get a better rating. Uh, because if they don't have a good rating, then it's harder to like grow your TVL. Uh, so I, I, I really want to endorse everyone to like join the Telegram, uh, follow them on Twitter, and also like, you know, don't ape into these farms uh, if the rug doctor <laughs> does not recommend it because uh, you, do, you, do, you do not want to be the ape that uh, loses uh, your funds because they get rugged. And you could have prevented it if you just followed the rug doctor. Uh, but yeah. Uh, well, we're not perfect. And I personally think it's just a numbers game because we've reviewed well over 600 farms at this point. And at some point, there's going to be some sneaky new rug that we have just never seen before. And it's going to just wreck us all. But that's why you split your bags so you can't get too wrecked. You know, mm -hmm. if you're only losing 10% of your whole pile, it's not as terrible. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's it's really great that we've been able to create such a community-focused resource and that we've been able to save funds for so many people. It's always really nice to see people who come in and say, oh my God, you guys saved me like $40,000. I was like, well, you shouldn't have thrown $40,000 into that farm, but <laughs> I'm glad you got out safe. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that said, you know, some of these projects, they are high risk, but it's just because they're a very complicated project and they legitimately do need something like a proxy or a migrator to move between upgrades. That is not most of these farms, though. That is the rare minority. Um, and sometimes there's no guarantee you're going to be able to get out. Sometimes you can emergency withdraw, but sometimes you can't. I know the other rug that we saw recently, Polyweed, they removed the emergency withdrawal from the code entirely. And then they just added an unstaking fee and then they put the unstaking fee to 98%. They're nice enough to leave you 2% if you unstaked. But, you know, there's all sorts of crazy traps. So if you're feeling bold, there's still no guarantee you're going to get out of a high risk project if it rugs. Yeah. And with these high APRs and APYs, there's always risk, right? I mean, the, the reason they're the, the potential upside is so high is because you're taking on risk. So, uh, you know, Rug Doctor is just a resource, but you should always do your own research and the Wikipedia page and like all the resources that, you know, like all the free content that they've been making, like I recommend everyone check that out to, to at least educate yourself. Um, so if you're done with the presentation, can I ask you a few questions uh, that I had? Um, yeah. Or, do you still want to go over this? Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, I mean, we kind of like, you, you touched on a little bit. Okay, okay, okay. So yeah. Um, and yeah, like you said earlier, we do work with farms now before launch. So we do our standard reviews, but now because farms have to work with us, we really work with farms ahead of time before launch. So they make sure that they get a good risk rating and that their code is safe. And that's really been awesome to see that we're doing this now. Is something that just started as a scanning 5 million codes for, you know, random apes in our channel. All of a sudden now we're working with the farm side of things and it's farms voluntarily coming to us, DMing me and being like, Hey, can you please review my code ahead of time? Um, I want to make sure I'm doing this right. Or, Oh, I hired a dev. I'm not a dev. I need to make sure the code is okay. Can you check it for me? And then being able to check it, give them an assessment, and we have fixed a lot of farms at this point. We've had several projects that come to us that have some unfortunate code left over that they weren't trying to put in there. Um, sometimes we, we've had some pretty cool exploits too every so often that we look at this and we're like, wow, we see what you're doing, but there is a backdoor here and you can lose 100% of your funds if a clever hacker figures this out. And we just redeploy with them. We figure out a patch, we work together, it's very collaborative, and then they redeploy it and the community is never the wiser. Everybody just keeps farming like per usual and everybody stays safer. And it's really cool to see that happening. And especially that it's such an easy resource because again, everything we provide is free and accessible. You just click on the website, it's there. Yeah, this is all great. Yep. Okay, not awesome. Yeah, now we get to the <laughs> Q and A. Uh, sorry to interrupt you earlier, but yeah, I, I, guess, I think one of the large, one of the most popular question that I guess the community has. Um, so I, I know there have been criticisms from like some members of the community uh, and 
other farms as well where they say you can you like downgrade their risk level if they pay for the ads um do you want to clarify on this point um sure do you want to clarify on that point yeah so we actually have a very specific procedure for how you can get to advertise with us and i think that's also driving a lot of why these farms are working with us ahead of time because you cannot advertise with us unless we have already reviewed you so you have to already be on our list you cannot just say, I want to advertise. We're not going to review you second and get you an ad package first. The process is you have to come to us. We have to review your code. It has to be published on our website. You have to be in the low or some risk rating. And the sum risk, we have some discretion. If it's a sum risk that we put as a sum risk because we actually feel a little uncomfortable about the team or some other factor that just seems a little more on the red side of some risk, you can't advertise with us either. It needs to be a sum risk that just has some benign looking custom code that we just, you know, haven't necessarily seen before that deviates from apparent work, but it just looks like it's minting a coin or something silly like that. Um, so we keep those two branches pretty separate. You have to jump through our hoops first. And then if you're a low or mild sum risk project, you can advertise with us. We do not downgrade risk assessments because of advertising packages. There's dozens of farms that come out every day. We are not particularly motivated to go out of our way to try and adjust our risk ratings for farms. It actually is something that is extra work for me. And so sometimes I get a little snippy late at night when people are just like, oh, why is farm some risk? Why is farm high risk? Downgrade the farm you know, you're a terrible person. I'm just like, look, man, <laughs> the code is the code. Yeah. These elements are in the code. I'm not changing my rating for you an advertisement or anything. If the code says that there's risk to this, that's, that's the end of the story. Yeah. Um, that's, that's really good to hear. Yeah. Just objectivity, like objectivity is very important when uh, you're working on something like this. And yep. early, early, you mentioned that like, the rug i guess the rug doctor chat it started out with like you and 24 other members right like but now it's at 8200 so uh, i mean that growth is insane for like like a two-month period right for like a community-driven project um so how big is your team now and how i guess how small was your team when you first started out like was it just you that started it and then like how, how did how does like the rug doctor team uh, grow because I, I know there's like a lot of members uh, that work with you Yes, absolutely. So when we first started, it was me uh, and my husband, because, uh, you know, I'm married, I have a husband, he lives with me. So it's just free labor. And <laughs> it was just like us in a house. And we were just scanning the codes, doing the reviews, moderating the channel. And then at some point, the channel got large enough, and it attracted enough people that I had some regular humans that were just showing up and being good, active, engaged members. And I was just like, do you want to be like admins and moderate my chat? And so then I got like, I'd say five, five administrators to start out in like this mid growth and help moderate my chat and like boil some ideas. But at this point, we've grown to such a large operation that I have, I think, 20 admin at this point. And they're wow. not just like chat moderators. We have just, and we have volunteer moderators too. We have like these junior moderators who are just these active engaged members of our community, keeping everything peer reviewed and, and you know, peer reflected, uh, who also help moderate our channel. But I like to call Rug Doc a reverse mullet. We have the party in the front and business in the back. <laughs> so <laughs> Wow. First time I've yeah. heard of that. <laughs> um, so basically, when you come, you see our Telegram and our Twitter and our website, and it just looks like a DJ and ape party. But when you actually wind up like looking behind the scenes, we have like a digital content team and we have, you know, like a team of scanners at this point because we get so many requests. There's no way like one or two or three people can keep up. So we have like trained our community members who started with us to be scanners. And that's so cool that we did that, I think. Um, literally, we've just been drawing people from our community who are active, engaged, longstanding members and using the skills that they come in with. So if it's someone who has like a comp sci degree, they're gonna be like a great scanner. And so we'll show them how to like scan these codes and do the reviews. If it's someone who has like marketing experience or digital um, content experience, we're gonna throw them over on that team. And we have 
all these funny layers of management at this point. It's feeling <laughs> very much like a business these days, which is yeah. hilarious to me seeing that it started as like a DJ and Abe channel <laughs> two, two and a half yeah. months ago. <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's funny that you started out with like you and your husband. Is, is your husband also an ape? <laughs> is he a bigger uh, yes. ape than you? Oh, wow. He is so. actually. Yeah, 100%. Wow. <laughs> actually, we started all this because he got rugged hard. Oh. Um, so he was our mad. finances. Oh no, we have to fix Basically, it. Basically, <laughs> so he dumped a, a stupid, stupid amount of money into a, a terrible farm. I think it was like oh. molten swap or something. He just like dumped a pile of money into molten swap, got rug. I didn't go in molten swap because I was like, eh, I don't know about this one, man. Seems kind of <laughs> sketchy. I don't like that Telegram channel. Wasn't checking the codes at that point. He lost all of his bag, proceeds to like rage around the house, like, hate ruggers. I want him to die. I hate the ruggers. What can we do? And uh, then it dawned on story. us. No, that's a great story. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I guess a good follow-up question to that is like, how often do you personally farm? And I'm, okay, I'm assuming your husband is still, still an ape because once an ape, always yes. an ape. So are you on the more degen side of the farms or do you only go for like the safer farms? So I would, I think I'm actually the bigger degen than my husband, honestly. <laughs> um, yeah, it's funny. I think I approach it with a more level head and people think that I'm just like this serious, serious, like, I don't know, strategic farmer. In, in for my main bags, yes, I am. Like, you know, I keep a lot of things in blue chips. I keep a lot of things just like in safe looking non-native stakes, just collecting a large amount of like interest until these things die out down to like 50% APR. And I just have a better place to stick them. But I, I, I mess with natives. I mess with tokens. I can't help it. I see some sort of like a tragically named meme coin and I'm just drawn to it. And I just have to throw like a B and B or something in there. I just have to. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna have to. That's yeah, funny. I'm just like, oh man, look at that! Like, Chi Coin has cats in it. I love cats. I just, I just gotta throw some money to the cat coin. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Yeah. So, yeah. Thanks. Thanks for the. Thanks for the answer. Uh, I have a few more questions. Uh, sure. So the next question I have is like, because you're, I guess you're like auditing and your team audits all these forms or not audit, but like looks over these forms. Mm -hmm. uh, have you seen any like trends when it comes to forms? So like, for example, has there been like a rise in like, like algorithmic stablecoin forms or mm -hmm. like, how, have you noticed that like the lifespan of these forms have gotten shorter over the, over, over the weeks? Like, do you, do you like, have any like trends uh, for these forms that you think would be beneficial mm -hmm. uh, to share with the community? Sure. Yeah. Actually, when you start, picking about with farms, you, you notice a lot of trends with them. So having stared at just a lot of farms day in, day out for like two and a half, three months now, I can tell you in the beginning, there were way more rugs on BSC. Like every other farm was a rug farm. Now, I like to think it's because of me, but I don't have firm proof of it. Uh, there's way fewer hard rugs and they tend to be short-lived now. They tend to just kind of show up and try and exist quietly and quickly and just go under whereas previously they were trying to really like live a little longer like 12 hours 16 hours a day to try and get like large tvl and they were like marketing and, and being loud to try and just get more people now things have kind of gone underground there in the beginning there are a lot of goose fork farms which mm -hmm. are kind of basic but don't have great emissions necessarily they exist more on market sentiment and now we've moved to these farms that have like aggressive emissions controls and elastic emissions built into them, which, you know, theoretically keeps tokens burnt and used longer. Um, I know right now it's like season of the panther forks, which have a lot of like interesting tokenomics in them, but they're also a big pain in the butt to review because they're a longer code. Um, let's see. I can tell you that there seems to be more farms that pop up on Sundays and Mondays. And there seems to be a pretty quiet lull in the market on Fridays and Saturdays. So just mm -hmm. fewer farms popping up and just less activity. Um, what else have I noticed? Um, all the polygon farms are basically named after animals or like TV shows, which is interesting. 
<laughs> BSC yeah, is yeah. just all over the place. Yeah, I, I joked yeah. about like on my channel, like all these polygon farms, it's like they're just like adding an animal next to it, like poly cat, poly whale. Yes. It's like, <laughs> come on, guys, like can you be more creative? And then I think yep. at the end of the month, they're like these new farms, like Monopoly. Okay, okay, that, that's yeah. that's creative. Police. All right, all right, that's not creative. <laughs> so yeah, and I'm like, okay, th th yeah. thank you, guys. thank you for at least like taking like <laughs> an extra hour to think about the name of these farms. And yeah, like I know, I, right? I, yeah, I think I think in May, like everything was a goose fork, at least on Polygon. It's just like the same thing yeah. over and over. There's like a new one like every other day. And yeah, like right now, there's like a bunch of more, I guess these farms are like trying to be more sustainable, right? It's yeah. it's more complicated, but uh, some of them are working, some of them aren't. But I mean, that's just that's how it is, right? And exactly. that being said, the last question I have for you is seems like you are an OG farmer, right? You're very degen, you know, you, you, you're married to an ape, you are an ape. Uh, so for any new farmers coming into a Polygon or buying a smart chain, like, can you share any alpha for like, how did you become like the farmer you are today? Like if, if you're, if someone's getting started for the first time, like what do you recommend them to do? And yeah, just general alpha that you can share with us. Of course, um, starting out, really limit yourself. So keep yourself on like these small blue chips with small bags, like literally play with a very tiny amount of money, whatever that means to you, just until you get an understanding because the DeFi learning curve is steep, very steep. And there's a huge barrier to entry and just understanding how to do transactions, how to manage your wallet and how to keep track of everything and how to actually analyze these farms. I know when I first started, like I think most people who first started out, you look at this world and you've only been looking at like bank APRs your whole life, right? So you see, <laughs> yeah. you see like 5,000% APR and you're just like, holy hell, if I put like $50,000 into this, my entire mortgage, I can be a billionaire in like four months, right? <laughs> right, everybody does that, it's a lie. And that's why you need to limit yourself until you actually understand how these tricky things work because your APR will crash, the token price will crash, and there's just a lot of analysis that you need to kind of get a, a rhythm for before you can um, start playing with funds that, you know, might get lost. <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. Your, your chance of losing funds as you go decreases overall. Um, yeah, for sure. Let's see, yeah. in terms of alpha, really educate yourself, take a moment, and you don't have to use my wiki, but there's not that many other resources out there. Go actually read some articles, understand how to manage things and hang out in a couple telegram chats. Don't necessarily participate. You don't even have to ask questions. Just hang out in them and observe the flow. See what farms get brought up, how people ape into them, how people get screwed by them and what people do on the other end. Um, just kind of observe the rhythm if you're just starting. In yeah. terms of alpha, it's not really alpha, but just a lot of these things rely on the fact that you need to get in early because some of these farms don't sustain and you mm -hmm. want to be able to capture a high token price and high interest rate for as long as you possibly can. So being able to just ingrain yourself in some sort of a community where you're going to be exposed to early farms or early tokens or whatever your play is, is going to be key in actually having some success. Also plan on not having success. I think that's the biggest revelation that I've had. Assume things are going to go terribly wrong. If they don't, it's great. If they do, <laughs> you're prepared for it. Yeah, yeah, mentally Literally, prepared for it. Yeah, mentally prepare for just, this is a death trap. Maybe I'll make it over, but maybe everything's going to go horribly, horribly wrong. Limit your bags, play with coins you actually understand and feel safe with. Enter projects that you fairly understand and feel safe in. Um, yeah, those are great. Those are great tips. Because um, I guess on my channel, uh, I, I mainly cover Polygon, but mm -hmm. for, I guess, newer participants, I just recommend them like go to Ave, right? I mean, they're a blue chip. Just yeah. understand how these work. And maybe you can take a tiny loan against your collateral and then put it in the Stegen farm and like uh, like you said observe right. the flow the one thing that really helped me is like like in may when i was just going full degen like i would like join these telegram groups 
right? And that would like observe how like the how like the team members right interact with the community. Because sometimes like these moderators or like these team members are like complete assholes. And <laughs> you know they, they they don't really care like, and they just like call people like yo like do your do your own damn research like. <laughs> this is my project and then some some uh, other projects are like yeah like and they're like really helpful they have like five team members and they're like always answering yeah. questions and those projects are more likely to sustain themselves and thrive than like these like tiny telegram groups of like one guy like just being a dick to everyone so always yeah, yeah. and that's like observing the flow it's it's sort of like an art not a science right you yeah, just kind of exactly. have to like experience it for yourself and then over time you'll, you'll just get smarter uh, so yeah, yep. that's the benefit of like educating yourself, actually participate. And over time, it was just like learn the ropes, right? Yeah. And honestly, a weird thing, just like one more little tip here that I've learned with time is actually go read some psychology books, like some market psychology books, or just like watch some documentary or a YouTube video on it. Because a lot of these projects exist on psychological factors, really like hype and sentiment. So if you can understand what gets people to tick and what people are drawn towards from say a marketing perspective, you can actually get better reads on farms in the future. If you see that a farm has, like you said, a friendly engaged team, a large team that is present 24 hours a day, that you know they have a pleasant looking website with like cool colors that they actually spent time on. You know, if a farm hits all these boxes, I can more or less shove them in a box that says these are more likely to succeed. So just go read some like marketing psychology books. They're very helpful for this sort of stuff. Yeah, definitely. Well, I just want to thank you for your time. This isn't a pretty long video. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of knowledge shared and I'm sure everyone, uh, I guess, like really appreciates your work. So I'm going to wrap up the video, but is there any like final parting words you want to tell the community? Uh, yeah. Do you have any final, final words? Yeah, I mean, obviously, thank you for having me here. It's been a blast. Uh, thank you for having your channel. I know people absolutely love you. I have gotten <laughs> so many referrals to your channel before. Thank it's you. pretty funny. And you're definitely doing a lot of great work for people. And hey, community, I love and appreciate you. And absolutely nothing of what we do here would be possible without your participation. My community runs on you, his community runs on you. All of D5 really is this fun, interesting community. And I personally am so grateful to be a part of it. Yeah, awesome. Uh, yeah, this has been a great video. Thank you yeah. for coming on. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. Thank you so much.